the same again this week, but you know, that's how you learn. Repetition. Not that I'm here to teach. Everyone seems to be thinking these are lessons. I don't really... These aren't lessons. But you can learn. So they are. Yeah. Right. Okay. What I mean is I'm not teaching, but you can learn. Okay. Anyway. This, as Sandy just pointed out, is a little bit more detailed drawing than the previous ones. And he's right. Uh, it's mainly because I've used different paper. It's a bit smoother. It allows more detail. Um, plus, I'm hoping that the lines will work for me because I want to paint this quite quick. Uh, I'm a busy man. I've got lots to do. Uh, so, we're just going to get straight into it. The next stage will be the brown ink wash, as I've done with the last ones. And we'll see how the paper reacts with that. Uh, because from paper to paper, the reaction can be quite significant sometimes, but uh, it should be okay. This is good watercolour paper. I think it's Winter and Newton or something. But it's smooth watercolour paper. Most are good. And, uh, yeah. Enough jibber-jabber. Let's get going. So... As usual, or not quite as usual, sometimes I'm lazy, I did a thumbnail. Uh, this is the original thumbnail here. Not that bit, but this bit here. Uh, blew that up onto A4 paper, just so I could transfer the information I liked from here onto this drawing. Also, I've kept this one because I kind of marked in where I want the deepest shadows and stuff like that, which will help me in the long run. Okay. So, it'll be the usual sort of sepia acrylic ink. Get some of that out. And basically with that, I'll be blocking in the shadows and emphasizing some details uh, as like the underlayer for all the color I'll be doing after that. As I've said before, I use acrylic ink rather than just doing a brown wash in watercolour because uh, it's water resistant. So the washes I do over the top shouldn't interfere with the underlying layers. Okay. Just a normal brush. Oh, it's an acrylic brush. Uh, it's okay with watercolour. Uh, you do get the sable ones and stuff, but they're quite expensive, not very ethical. So these synthetic ones are just as good. Anyway, we've all got our preferences. So what I'm doing here is blocking in shadows, as I say. I haven't used this paper before, so it's quite different from the ones I've been doing in the last videos. It seems okay. Actually quite different. I hope I haven't made a mistake using this paper. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm hoping it will dry lighter than it seems at the moment. That's why it's usually a good idea to do a little test piece on the paper you're going to be using. Which I didn't do. Yes, it is acting differently from the last paper, but I've just got to resign to the fact I'm going to have to adapt, so might end up with a slightly different feel and look to this one, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Again, colour-wise, I'm not really, well, that's not true. I've been thinking about it, but uh, I've not made my mind up yet. I decided to do a little graphic element. So just having a portion of background behind the character, just to make it look pretty. Uh, and I've got in mind to keep that sort of quite a cold grey sort of tone, so any colour I do in front of that grey should be should work fine with that because it's a neutral colour. I'm thinking yellows and greens maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Whatever colour I go for I'll make sure it's quite earthy anyway. Play safe. So most of this I'm just picking out lines that I've already drawn. But even in the finished thing after the multiple layers, those pencil lines will still be there, very subtle, but they'll be working.
trying to work out shadows. I do enjoy that bit. It's not a matter of getting it right, it's just a matter of making it look like it's right. slowly getting used to this paper. It's not the most forgiving paper I've used before. It really soaks it up. Okay, yeah, so you can see what I'm doing here, just blocking in shadows and getting a few of the values down, the tones down. Uh, so I'm going to crack on with that and I'll see you on the other side. Right, okay, that's that phase done. Uh, I wish I'd practiced on the paper beforehand, but it's okay, it's okay. It's a bit more, it soaked up the paint more than I thought it would, but you know, I'm not making excuses, I'm just stating facts. I'll have to adapt and just go with the flow basically, but anyway. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, okay, so next phase is colour. Um, I'll probably still keep this out because I've still to do other shadows and deeper shadows, which will be at the end of the process. But right now, I'd start thinking about what colours I'm going to be using, and uh, I think I'm just going to use the palette rather than the tubes for speed's sake. And I'm going to try and do this sort of reasonably fast. I mean, it's not going to, still going to be hours rather than minutes, but uh, keep it loose, I suppose is what I mean. So, uh, let's go. Okay, so this is the time I usually contemplate colours. I uh, still can't make my mind up, so I'm just going to dive straight in and do the colours that, you know, are what they are, such as the leather stuff, the browns. So let's do that. Uh, I usually give my palette a quick spray, get those colours wet. And then uh, think about the 
the first layer, the under layer so to speak. Slowly getting used to this paper which I know I keep going on about. Uh, I wish I'd got for the paper I'd used last time. So we'll see. nice warm brown something to work on top of uh, it's easy enough to cool these colors down later touches of blue and stuff but it's just the first layer of color Keeping it quite loose for this one. But as ever, as I go along, the picture kind of dictates what it wants, what sort of approach it needs. Maybe it was just the acrylic ink that I was having trouble with with this paper. The watercolour seems to be going on fine. So that's a positive. Let's work with that. usual I'll see if I can carry that colour anywhere else now I know how it looks on the paper I've got a better idea of where to place it Probably won't get to doing that part of the body till the end. God. I've got a habit of leaving the face till the end. It's very tempting to dive straight in there, but uh, all this really is going to be a frame to that face because that's going to be a focal point. So it's probably a better, a best idea to leave it for now. But uh, these initial colours will help. Uh, help me make my mind up with uh, how I proceed with colours elsewhere such as the tunic and get the face even.
faith in the Pope has been restored. Yeah, I can work with this. <clears throat> So with this tone, I'm now looking at it and thinking what areas to warm up and what areas to cool down. Uh, you just work from there, really. Obviously, these are the warmer parts I'm doing at the moment. I'm starting to get that leathery feel to the saddle now. And the paper's quite thin, but it's behaving itself now, so that's good. Trusty air dryer. Yep, that's not working okay. So, 
Uh, I'm just going to slowly work my way across, I think. Uh, yes. So I reckon I've always almost got this finished. Uh, just been doing what I've been doing in the past videos and ending with the darkest shadows, the darkest points. Bringing all the tonal values back up again and pushing stuff back, cooling stuff down. Of it, I think maybe in the next video I'll try something different, different technique. But you know, don't hold me to it. See how I feel.
And I think that blue's worked and help help push the character forward and boost the colours that would otherwise be quite pale, but no, that's worked how I wanted it to. And I think that's him done. So, thanks again for watching. Uh, get your friends to subscribe. Get your mum to subscribe. Another one soon. Thanks very much.